of Preflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Choose whose side you're going to be on when you deal with the giants in your life. You got to make a decision. When that giant stands up, you got to remind yourself that the Lord is my helper. He helps me when I don't even know what to do. He helps me to make the right decision. He helps me to show up. He helps me to face the problem. He helps me say the right thing. He helps me to do what needs to be done. He helps me when I don't even know I need help. Your story is just beginning. The 2024 Change Experience Tour is where you need to be. Meet Creflo Dollar on Friday, April 26th at the Centennial Memorial Temple in New York, New York to be renewed by the Word and reminded that you are made new in Christ. Your story isn't over. RSVP today. Text CHANGE2024 to 51555. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org or scan the QR code on your screen. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We sing by His grace, so we embrace your love today. So one of the ways that we can do to stop running away from our problems is to be bigger than your fears. Be bigger than your fears. I remember before the pandemic started, Creflo called me and he said, uh, I got a call from the mayor of South Fulton. He says, we've got to cancel services. We've got to shut down the building. We cannot allow any more than whatever the number was at that time, and we were right on the cusp of our annual conference. And I said, dear Lord, this was like second or third week in March before, you know, things just began. Things were just kind of starting to happen. And it was this toiling between to cancel it or the decision to have it. Now, granted, that was before any events were virtual, before things. Everybody during that time was just canceling everything. All the major events were canceled. Music festivals, sporting events, everything was canceled. Anybody remember that? And so I said, Lord, I just need to not allow my fear to govern dealing with this situation, dealing with this problem. And so I realized the importance of just being led by God and knowing whether or not I'm doing what God wants me to do, because I'm more concerned about pleasing him than I am anything. And, you know, we had some things in place, thankfully, that we could easily pivot and make the meeting virtual, and that's what we decided to do. As opposed to just canceling it all together and just, you know, packing up everything that we had planned, you know, for a look, such a long period of time, we said, you know what? We're going to face this head on. And, you know, we were out there on the water. You know, sometimes when you face problems in your life, you're out there by yourself. It hadn't been done before. Nobody, I mean, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, but, you know, it feels that way. And so it's important for us to recognize that we must be bigger than our fears. And that's how David was. He was bigger than Goliath. He was bigger than the fears that all of the army had. He says, I'm bigger than that. I've been out here with the lion. I've been out here with the bear. I've been out here and took the animals out of the lion's mouth. I've taken animals out of the bear's mouth. Who is this uncircumcised 
Philistine. Because he'll be just like the lion and he'll be just like the bear. And so, David, he showed up. And when he showed up, he showed up in courage. He showed up in confidence. He showed up willing to rely on God's covenant, God's plan for his life. All of Israel were terrified. None of them would dare to challenge Goliath. But after David heard about the reward for defeating Goliath, he accepted the challenge as if it were nothing. As if it were nothing. Not to mention he was like a baby in size. In fact, Saul asked him, said, David, are you sure that you want to do this? Look at verse 24 and 37. 24 and verse 37. It says, uh, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man fled from him, they were sore afraid. Now skip down to verse 37. He says, and David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go Saul said, I ain't going, but you can go. (laughs) Some people leave you out there by yourself, but that's all right if you know that you know and you're knower. Hey, the Lord will be with you. Just like the Lord was with David. Just like the Lord was with, you know, Gideon. Just like all the other situations and patriarchs of the past. The Lord will be with us. Amen? And so, uh, number two. So, number one, be bigger than your fears. Be bigger than your fears. Number two, the size of the problem doesn't matter. We have to make a decision. The size of the problem, because Goliath was huge. He was believed to be nine foot tall. His armor bearer went before him, and uh, the, I think it was the tip of this sword was all these pounds. And so, you know, it was very obvious that he was a big man. But you know what? David wasn't moved by that. David wasn't concerned about his size. Now Saul was, and Saul brought it to his attention. So in life, we will come across, how many of you know, big challenges. You know why? Because the devil wants to wipe us out. There'll be some small challenges. There'll be tiny challenges. There'll be enormous challenges. But the size of the challenge, the size of the problem, the size of the obstacle is irrelevant because that doesn't determine what's possible for me. The only thing that determines what's possible for you is your mindset. You determine what's possible for you. You determine your mindset. You determine your beliefs. You determine how you see the problem. See, David didn't see the problem. Goliath, like everybody else, saw the problem. David didn't see the giant like his brothers saw the giant. David just popped up. Hey, what's going on? And they were all dismayed and worked up. He said, oh, absolutely not. Because size did not matter to David as it did And if it did, he wouldn't have had the courage to take on Goliath. Especially with the staff and five smooth stones and a sling. It was David's heart, it was with his courage, and it was his commitment. So think bigger than the challenge. Be bigger than the obstacle. 
And you know what David did? Act as if it's impossible for you to fail. When we stepped out and did that conference, and I'm like, oh, Lord, we out here on the water. Internet don't fail me now. People were joining the, the, the stream, and some of them were just falling out of the stream, just people falling out left and right. Texts, emails, I'm getting kicked out. Somebody help me. I'm out here. I'm trying to watch y'all, buddy. You know, I'm like, oh, Father, that first session, it was something else. And then I just said, Lord, I just trust you that you're going to allow the people who need to hear this, the people who need to receive this to be in the position to get what needs to be gotten. And you've got to be like David. His attitude was, this is impossible for me to fail. You know why? Because he had God on his side. He knew who he was. He knew who was backing him. He knew why he was doing it. His motive was right. The reason what he do it, what he was doing was right. And so the size of the problem doesn't matter. We have to make a what? Make a decision. Make a decision. And remind yourself when you make a decision that the Lord is with me. David was conscious of the fact that God was with me when I was out there in the shepherd's field, and God's going to be with me right here in the midst of fighting Goliath. God is with me. The Lord is with me. I told our team, I said, the Lord is with us. I believe that God wants us to have this meeting. I don't believe God wants us to cancel it. I got messages. People said, cancel it. Postponing at that time, people were postponing to 2022, 2023, you know, just cancel and postpone. I said, no, we're going to have it. Bless God. You have to make up in your mind and know in the midst of challenges that the Lord, what, is with you. The Lord is with me. And that's what Saul said. Saul said, hey, dude, you out there on your own. May the Lord be with you. And I like what he says over in Psalms 23, that thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. When we get a revelation of who's with us, we know that we are never alone. So I can face the problem. I can face the giants in my life. I don't have to run. I don't have to ignore them. I don't have to hide. I don't have to pretend like it's not there. But I can face it just like David did. I can stare it in the face just like David did. Because you know what? I know that the Lord has my back. And if we're going down, we're going down together, bless God. Amen? But ain't nobody going down. So when everyone told David he couldn't fight Goliath, he replied that he had fought the lion and the bear. Glory be to God. You got to make up in your mind and get a revelation. You got to get a revelation of this and stop running. Because the devil will have you running all the days of your life. you just running. And I'm telling you, some of you just need to stop running. Stop running. I can do this. I'm bigger than this situation. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I need to apologize. If I need to take responsibility, if I messed up, hey, I'm not afraid of that. I'll say that too. But the enemy wants us to deceive ourselves. You know, keep deceiving yourself. Keep running. You know you can't deal with that. You better run. Here they come. Oh, no. 
Sometime in your life, child of God, you got to make up in your mind that I'm tired of running from the problems in my life. Tired of running from the popo man, from the repo man. I'm tired now. Tired of running from the debt collectors. Hello, what do you want? I don't have the money. I'll get the money. I'll pay you back. Tired of running from you. Let's face things because it causes us to develop. Causes us to get better. Causes God to get involved and to intervene in our everyday affairs. I'm telling you. Ooh, glory be to God. Now, let's look at number three. Make use of what you already have. Look at what David did. Make use of what you already have. Have. So many times we think that we don't have what it takes. We aren't that person who can overcome the giants. We can't do it because we need something else. We need to be another person. We need to come in another way. We need to have X, Y, and Z. David didn't think about any of that. In fact, when Saul came to David and Saul was trying to put his armor on David, it just did not fit. It was too big. It was not the right size. So David said, no, I can't. I can't. This is not me. I can't. I got to take this off. Give me my five smooth stones and give me my sling. David had everything that he needed. You have God. You get the word. And I'm telling you, you get the Holy Ghost to tell you what to do. You spend some time in prayer. You get a word from the Lord on what to do in situations. How many of you know that's all you need? He'll tell you whether to move forward. He'll tell you whether to stop. He'll tell you which direction to go in if this is for you. But make use of what you already have. Look at 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2. This is the woman who had lost her husband. She had lost everything. She said to the prophet that, you know, it's just me and my son, and we're just going to stay here and die. And the prophet asked her, what do you have in your house? You have to ask yourself, what do I have? Obviously, Uh, this situation is coming into my life for a reason. So it's going to make me stronger. It's going to make me better. It's going to develop me or I will decide not to develop. I will decide to shrink back. I will decide to stay in the same situation in fear, in intimidation, uh, in avoidance. But She had to make the decision, just like we do today, to make use of what we have. And the scripture says uh, that Elijah said to her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? What do you have in the house? It wasn't what she didn't have. It wasn't, you know, what she could be. It wasn't this fantasy of how, you know, something else had happened, and that was the reason why. He says, no, woman, what do you have? And she said, thine handmaid had not anything in the house, nothing in the house. Man of God, I have nothing in my house except a pot of oil. And you know what? That's the very thing that God used. That's what Saul uh, had to understand with David. I don't have this armor, this big, you know, thing that I can put on me with all the artillery. I got my smooth stones, and that's what I know, that's what I have, and that's what I'm going to use. And that's the very thing that God used to defeat Goliath. Regardless 
of the comparison in weight, Daniel was a little small, tiny thing, regardless of the strength, the armory, the weapons, etc. David didn't complain because of the differences like the Israelites would have. He had a so what attitude and left everyone in shock after defeating Goliath so effortlessly. I mean, you know, we got to change the trajectory of our lives, change the directory of our families. We've got to show up, start dealing with stuff, trust God, believe God that when we show up, that he's going to give us the means and the knowledge and the ability to do what needs to be done. Somebody say, the Lord is with me. The Lord is with you. Let me give you a couple of scriptures here on the Lord is with you. Remind yourself of these. Over in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. Look at this in the Amplified Bible. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. Somebody say, the Lord is with me. 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 So we take courage and we are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, he says, so we take comfort. So we take comfort. Take comfort. I'm comforting myself in this uh, gigantic situation. I take comfort and I am encouraged confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me? Turn to Psalms 118, verse 6. Psalms 118, let's look at this. Verse 6. The Lord is on my side. It's like David had a revelation. The Lord is on my side, big brother. The Lord is on my side. Saul, the Lord is on my side. Whose side am I on? I'm on the side of fear. Am I on the side of uh, dismay? Am I on the side? What side am I on? Because the Lord wants to be on our side. We have to make a decision. Choose whose side you're going to be on when you deal with the giants in your life. You got to make a decision. Are you trying to ignore the trouble spots in your life? Are you tired of the struggle? In Taffy Dollar's three-part series, How to Have Hope When It's Hard, she uncovers how to overcome and find victory in the midst of trials. He gives us solutions. He doesn't leave us stranded. He doesn't leave us in a place where we're worse off than where we were before. You got to make up in your mind, God will save me. God will deliver me. God will heal me. There are answers that are waiting in the presence of the Lord. Thank God for him being the same yesterday, today, and forever. This series is available for a love gift of only 20 U.S. dollars or more for CDs or 30 U.S. dollars or more for DVDs. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore to get yours. Secure your copy of the series today and activate a new response to adversity. Reunite and ignite with your World Changers family at Grace Life Conference 2024. You need to be at the World Dome in College Park, Georgia from July 11th through the 13th for a three-day celebration packed with surprises with guest speakers Gregory Dickow, Andrea Creighton, Inky Johnson, 
Bishop Clarence McClendon and Michael Smith. Prepare to show up and be blown away by wisdom-filled sessions and life-changing revelation. Whatever you believe in God for, it is here. Grace Life, you have to come. There's nothing comparable to it. Don't miss Soul Stirring Worship with Hezekiah Walker and Brian Courtney Wilson. Text Grace Life, one word, to 51555 or scan the QR code to reserve your spot now and get ready for the reunion. After visiting many countries all over the world, we've come to understand that we all have a lot in common and we have very similar vital needs. Our mission teams, they distribute school supplies to children as well as medical supplies, food, clothing, hygiene kits to communities throughout the entire world. Meeting the physical needs of hurting people opens the door to share the gospel of grace with them. Thank you so much for helping us to meet these needs. God bless you. Your generosity paves the way for our missions team to aid some of the most impoverished countries in the world. We're able to supply them with much needed resources to meet their physical and spiritual needs. To support this broadcast with your financial donations, simply call in or give online at missions.creflodollarministries.org. Thank you for your faithful support. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. As we wrap up today's broadcast, I'd like to take a moment to pray for you. I don't ever want to take for granted that you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. There's no better way to embark upon a new stage in your life than to enter into a personal relationship with Christ. So if you want to become born again and begin an exciting, intimate relationship with Jesus, pray this prayer with me now. Heavenly Father, come into my heart save me. I receive you now by faith and I declare in Jesus' name that I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.